So this video is to go over the learning targets, um, how to simplify algebraic expressions, including using the distributive property. So we're going to dive into distributive property, and then I will probably separate out all the rest of the properties. Okay, so here we go. Just to show you where this is located on your learning targets, we have our learning progressions for numeric expressions. Okay, that's all of this side. And then we have our algebraic expressions on this side. So this skill that we're going over in the video is your mastery skill, right? Can you simplify algebraic expressions, including using the distributive property? Um, this will help us also identify equivalent expressions eventually. Okay, so let's jump in. When a teacher asks you to distribute papers in the classroom or take this bowl of lollipops and distribute them to the class, what do we mean? What do you think we mean? We're asking you to pass out, right? Make sure everybody gets one equally. You're, you're passing them out, right, to deliver, okay? So you are going to do the same thing when we say distribute the math problem, okay? So remember, here's a very quick visual. Um, when you have a number shoved up against parentheses, that's shorthand for multiplication, right? Anytime two things are shoved up against one another without that operation symbol showing, it's multiplication, okay? So when you distribute, it means, look inside your parentheses here, you're going to have an addition or a subtraction problem in here. Okay, and what they're saying is, hey, with the four shoved up against here, you're not only going to take four times X, but you're going to take four times three as well. So very quickly, just showing you what that is going to equal, four times X can't be solved because we don't know what X is, right? So when we say to actually write it or simplify it, four times X is written as four times X, four X, right? So we just rewrote that part. The addition sign stays. You don't even have to think about that part, right? And then 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. So when applying the distributive property, you want to take the number on the outside of the parentheses and multiply it with every number or variable located inside the parentheses. So here is my beautiful um, pen right now, and I'm going to hopefully be able to show you on this. Five times four and five times six is what we're going to work on, right? So what's five times four? 20. Remember your operation symbol just comes down. You don't even have to think about that, right? And then five times six, 30, right? Can we keep going? Yes, we can. These are like terms. So all together we have 50, all right? Next example, two times eight, the two's being distributed, right? And then two times three. Two times eight, 16. The operation symbol for subtraction just comes right down. Two times three is six. Can I keep going? Yes. They're both constants. My answer is 10, okay? I'm hoping that seems pretty easy to you right now, okay? So we distribute, right? Cool, cool, cool. Distribution works even when there's a variable, especially when there's a variable, you guys. So when we're looking at this one, six times n, remember we don't know what n is, so we're just basically rewriting it. Six times n is rewritten as six n. Shove them together, right? Operation symbol comes down. Don't even think about it. Six times five. That is. Can we combine these? Are these like terms? Six N plus 30. No, we cannot. This has a variable. This is a constant. So we are done, right? That's why we call it simplifying instead of solving because we did not get like one direct answer. Okie dokie. So stop, pause the video, try these two out, and then check your answers. All right, I'm going to take 11, and I'm distributing it, right? So 11 times A. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> 11 times A is 11A, right? 11 times A. I just shoved it together. Bring down your subtraction sign without even thinking about it. And then 11 times 4. Oh, whatever. Can we combine these? 
No, they're not like terms. We have an A and we have a constant. So we are done. We've simplified it as far as we can go, right? Um, over on this one, 6 times 7. I'm distributing my 6, right? So I'm doing 6 times 7 is 42. Bring down my operation symbol without even really needing to think about it. And then 6 times K, 6 K. Just shoving them together, right? Means multiplication. Can't go any further because 42 is a constant. 6K as a variable. Cool. Try this one out. Pause your video. See if you get them correct. Here we go. We're taking the three and we're going to distribute it. Do, 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 do. Okay. Yeah, there's three of them. There could be 18 different numbers inside parentheses and you could distribute all the way as long as everything is either a subtraction or an addition sign inside. Okay. So three times X, three X, right? Bringing down my subtraction sign. Three times Y, three Y. <laughs> Bring down your addition sign and then three times four is 12. Can I go any further? Are any of these like terms? I have an X, I have a Y, and I have a constant. So I'm done. I can't go any further. On this side, I love this example because this used to throw me off, right? As a kid, this is tricky. Um, one, they show a multiplication sign here, even though it's kind of funky. That's a huge dot, but okay. Um, and it's on this side, right? We're so used to seeing it on this side. Every example I've shown you so far has been from this side. Even if it's on the right side of your parentheses, it means the same darn thing, right? Nine times three, nine times X. Cool? Okay, so we're gonna take nine times X, which is nine X, and then bring down your addition sign, doot, doot, and then nine times three, 27. <laughs> Sorry, that was derpy. My finger got stuck. Okay. Can I go any further? This is an X and this is a constant. So I am done. Alrighty. Notice I kept the order. Okay. You're really tempted because you're like, ooh, the three is closest. So I'm going to do that one. Right. The X is first. If you're reading your problem from left to right, the first thing that you see is your X, right? So that's what you have to work with first. What are you doing with the X? You are multiplying it by your nine. Cool. Okay. Da, 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 da. All right, here we go. Same thing, um, multiplication, your addition, or subtractions inside the parentheses, okay? Think about this question. Which of the following can the distributive property be applied? I like it. Okay, so this is making you think, right? Can I distribute the 2 to the 4 and the 6? Yes, I can. Check, check. Okay. Can I distribute the 5 to the 10? and the three. Yes, check, check. Can I distribute the seven to the two and the x? No. Can I do the two times four, two times nine, all that? Yep. Can I distribute the seven to the eight and the one? No. Why? So if you take a look at this, you guys, to kind of like make a trick, right? This one works because inside your parentheses is addition. This one works because inside your parentheses is subtraction. That's when you can, right? What's inside your parentheses? Multiplication. So we cannot do it. That's not when it works. Nope, nope, nope. This one has addition. That one works. This one has multiplication inside plus... If you look out here, the seven's not even shoved up against the parentheses, you guys. They have an addition sign here. So this one is a great example because oftentimes when we are practicing distributive property, your brain starts to see it everywhere, even when it's not a true distribution property. It doesn't mean absolutely every single time you see something inside parentheses, you're supposed to distribute, right? Look at this, right? You're like, oh, I see my parentheses. Oh, I see that it's addition inside the parentheses. I'm good to go. Stop and look. You don't have four shoved up against, so it's not a distributive property problem, okay? It's got an addition sign, so this is not relevant. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? Great. Here we go. So why distribute? 
why the heck are we even doing this? Let me show you, okay? So when we're doing PEMDAS, right, order of operations, if you look at this problem, what would you do first? You were supposed to do what's inside parentheses first, right? Okay, I'm going to do 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay, what do you get when you do that? You get 6, right? And now I'm left with multiplying by 4. Okay, so 6 times 4 is 24. Awesome. Okay. What if I distribute instead? That means I'm going to take 4 times 1, right? 4 times 1. 4 times 2. 4 times 2. 4 times 3. 4 times 3, right? And when I get each of those answers, I'm going to add them all together, and I still get 24. Why the heck would I do that? I mean, I still get the same answer, so it didn't hurt me, but why would I do that? Okay, here you go. Why in the world do we need to know how to distribute, right? Why can't we just solve what's in the parentheses first like we've always done? <laughs> Let's look at this example, you guys. Well, in algebra, when we have unknown variables like an x, try to solve this. Think about it and say, hmm, I have parentheses. I'm going to solve this first x plus 6, uh, I can't. I can't solve that, right? We don't know what this is. I cannot simplify that, right? So instead, instead of trying to um, solve what's in parentheses, getting frustrated and knowing you can't go any further, this is when you say, I Ah, okay, now I'm going to distribute, right? Because that's going to help me say 3 times x plus 3 times 6, okay? So the whole reasoning behind distrib distributing property is because you're going to end up with variables inside your parentheses that need to be distributed, right? Okay, so I had another activity. Um, if you are interested in wanting to have more hands-on review, I definitely have that. Um, I also have some videos that you guys can do. Um, but in general, I think that this video should probably be enough already. Um, here's some examples where it's a little bit different looking, I guess, but it's only because they look a little bit bigger. So this is four times, or sorry, five times 4y plus five times six. And that's all you're doing here is five times you're filling it out. What are you multiplying by? I'm multiplying by 4y and then I'm multiplying by 6. That's all they're asking you to do on problems like this. I think they do it on um, Alex like that. So I'm just showing you in case they ask you to like break it down. They're basically just asking you to show your work. What would you do to 12? I'd multiply it by 36 and then I'd multiply 12 by 2 again. Okay, so if you see that in Alex, just let me know. It's not confusing. It just looks weird. <laughs> um. Okay, the next learning target is identifying when two expressions are equivalent using properties of addition and multiplication. So I'm going to stop here, actually, because I think distributing should be practiced all by itself. That's kind of a new skill. And then if you're ready, you can jump on for the next video that goes over this.